In recent news, NASA has tested a new solid rocket booster, 25% more powerful than those used by the space shuttle. That's going to send us out into deep space. And this is your space news. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Space News. It's been a whole week since we saw you last. I'm Kevin. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Got you on that one. <laughs> I'm Marcus. That's Kevin. And we're here today to talk to you about the Jupiter Exoliner. Yes, so Lockheed Martin is right now designing a new space freighter, basically. One that is much more smarter and reusable, at least while it's still in space. Right. So it's kind of like a tugboat is what people have sort of described it as. Or something rela- like relatable to a train, maybe. Because they like trains. Lockheed Martin like likes trains. trains. Uh, we're showing the video that you can see uh, is actually showing you the... the uh, Promotional concept. video. Yeah, promotional yeah. and concept footage of what this thing will look like. So it's refuelable, which is a key thing that we haven't been able to do thus far. And it has its own robot arm so that it can connect to other things. Right. And that's what makes this actually very special, because normally it's just been the International Space Station or the Space Shuttle that has its own arm to connect to things. Right, so we can have a launch vehicle, a vehicle goes up, connects to this thing, gets grabbed by Jupiter, and it gets brought up to the ISS, or to the moon, or eventually it could be a sort of vehicle around Mars. Right, so the Jupiter could be outfitted as maybe like an extra module for a moon mission, or it could just be filled with supplies uh, that goes to the ISS, and then things may get switched out, like science experiments, Right, and then it goes to a refueling station, possibly in orbit, mm-hmm. and then it could go to the moon. Because of this refueling thing, a lot of mission profiles open up. It's very versatile, and it could be coming as soon as 2018, which is very exciting, because that's pretty close, and that's when the new... Uh, launch vehicles, the ta- the space taxis will start ferrying people right. up around that time. So this is a good time for it to be tested and work. Be exciting. But we have another connection to Jupiter. Yes. Not, I mean... Closer to the actual Jupiter. Right, because I don't really like the name of the Jupiter exoliner. It's too confusing. But the real Jupiter has a moon called Ganymede. Right. And Ganymede is the largest moon in the entire solar system. Yes. It's actually larger than the planet Mercury. It's big. Very big. What's exciting is that we think that we have found that there is a lot of water underneath the surface of Ganymede. A lot. Now, Ganymede is special not only because of its size, but it's the only moon with, with a magnetic field surrounding it. And so scientists have been observing this magnetic field through the aurora that it creates and have noticed that it varies over time as it connects to Jupiter's magnetic field. Right. But it varies in a very specific way. And they can actually determine the amount that it varies can tell us about what is causing that change in the magnetic field. And it, they've come to the conclusion that this is a liquid under the surface ocean. Right. So under miles of crust, they think that there could be a 60 mile deep ocean. So that's more water than is on the surface of Earth. Right. That's a lot of water. And it's not just regular water. This is water that they believe has either salt a lot of salt or minerals anything that can carry a charge so that once you have a moving liquid that carries a charge rotating really fast then you get a magnetic field and that explains the change in the aurora that we're seeing on ganymede it's very exciting stuff further proving that our solar system is apparently a lot wetter than you would have expected right and uh jim green the head of nasa's planetary science uh said that the solar system is looking like a, a soggy place because news of you know water underneath the surface on Ganymede, under Enceladus, maybe under Titan, in Europa. It's just adding up into a lot of different places. Mars, maybe the moon, who knows? <laughs> Where could it be next? We're coming for you, water. We're coming for you, because that's where we believe the next piece of life could be in our, in our very own solar system. We don't really know. Uh, and another sort of solar system related piece of news this past Friday was marked the anniversary of when Uranus was discovered by William Herschel back in, I can't remember the date, I wrote it down. 1781 so that's a long time ago yes. but 240 years 230 years. but still very recent compared to all the other planets except which Pluto. people have like the, the interior planets yes, that people yes. have known about for thousands right exactly but i mean it, it's just a cool thing to know i mean uranus is out there it's the seventh planet it's blue and it's tilted it's a little weird but yeah it's cool you know history so <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit subscribe. Uh, You can also support the show by buying t-shirts, much like the one that I'm wearing right now. You can buy them over at outofspacetv.spreadshirt.com. You can also like and comment below and make sure to subscribe to see more of our content. Yeah, see, for some reason, if you're bored and you don't have any new videos coming your way, 
subscribe. The videos will always be there. You can also click on a video, and that'll help get you, you know, more content to watch. But Kevin will say more about that after we leave. All right. So, <laughs> thank you for watching. Thanks. And we'll see you out there. Thanks for watching today's video. You can like and subscribe down below, as well as comment on all the different subjects that we talked about today. You can find other content elsewhere on the internet, so look for those links. You can also watch a random video of our channel right here. Thanks for watching.